What's up, guys? Wall J here, and I'm here with my co-host and producer, Chris. Chris, say hello to the peoples. Hello, peoples. See, that's better. I think I'm just going to start introducing you because because you go, eh, me, eh, eh, me, me. It's my thing, bro. It's my trademark, <sighs> man. You know what? It's kind of lame. It's to, Guinea. To be honest with you. Okay. I mean, that's fine. I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just not, saying. I'm not super cool do, anyway. So, I mean, do, do, you pre- do you prefer that I don't introduce you and you just care. go me? I don't care. Oh, it's been a long week for you. Ah, it's been a fuck week for me. Ah. So I heard that uh, you had to like bend over, grab your ankles, and uh, kind of take it up the ass. A little shit. bit, a little bit, but it's cool because overall, I only had to take half the shaft. It could have actually, I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't tell you. I, it could have been, believe it or not, as bad as I was telling you, my week was. <laughs> it actually could have been a lot worse. I could have had to take a full shaft, and if something else would have transpired, well, so. I mean, once you go half shaft, might as well just take it all. Fuck it. Yeah, it's one of those things. What kind of man are you? Are you going to run or are you going to back up? At that point, well, if you back up, you get the whole shaft. Yeah, so I ran. So I'll take half shaft. (laughs) So, no, we'll deal with it. Uh, Like I said, I think after the podcast, I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to put some swim trunks on, make a margarita. I'm going to float in the pool, and I'm probably just going to drink tonight. Well, fuck it. What do, you, what do you need a bathing suit for? This is your house. Because it'll still be. It's also Florida, and it's it won't get dark until nine o'clock. Bro, you, you'll get an even ten. No, I won't. The sun <laughs> will be behind the trees. <laughs> nah. Still, there's no need for bathing suits. Even though that, even though that is Tyler's. Like every now and then, when he helps me in the yard, it'll be like, "Yo, just strip down, jump in the pool." Can I? Can I? Can I? I was like, "Yeah, dude, just go ahead, jump in the pool." Shit, dude, that is his like that is the greatest thing since sliced bread to him. He <laughs> thinks like we're breaking some rule <laughs> that you know only we get to break. I, I I be doing that shit all the time. Shit, I'll be like, "Oh, you see the bubbles? I farted. I farted." <laughs> dude, it, he is hilarious when I tell him that too. He's like, "No, dude, just strip down, jump in." Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's like, damn, bro. Yeah, I don't have a pool like that, so I can't. I mean, I I, I mean, do, you do. I but do, but it, it'd be frowned upon if I do it. I have an apartment complex. Yeah. Heavily, you would have to find a yeah. new apartment complex. Um, no, they probably wouldn't kick me out; just get me arrested for indecent exposure, and then a new apartment complex. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Your luck, some kid would walk by, and then you'd, you'd yeah, end no up having shit. to get you know. I'll be like put on the list. Yeah, like he's a sexual predator, right? Like, guys, I was just skinny dipping. Motherfuckers. That's got to be wonderful. Yeah. New apartment complex. Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm your, you know, friendly neighborhood predator. Oh, God. You like cookies? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But just know if you're, if I'm ever house sitting, I'm probably going to, going to do that. Hey, by all means. Yeah. Shit. The cop across the street, anytime that they've got training and um, he gets gassed. Yeah. He'll um he'll text me and be like, hey, because you know the gas gets in his clothes, yeah, uh, but the the water neutralizes it, and he'll just be like, hey, um, you mind if I dip in the pool real quick? I'll be like, no, man, go ahead. Now I I'll be I've seen him on the camera before, coming around the front of the house, and I can I've been sitting on the couch too, and you'll see him. He'll stop by the hot tub, and he'll pull off his service belt and anything metal and stuff like that, and then you just see him just fall into the pool uniform and all, to just try to get the gas off of his clothes. It's well, like, doesn't that fuck up your water? No, no, because the water neutralizes it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it'll dissipate. So I just know for like another hour, because my pump that's on the pool, because uh, I was talking to my, my new pool guy, he's like, man, you got a big pump for this pool. I was like, do it really? He goes, yeah, it's about three times the pump you really need for the pool. He goes, well, that's good. That's good. He's like, oh, cool. So I, I've only got a 10,000-gallon pool and uh Place so to be rich and shit yeah okay whatever <laughs> yeah i yeah, know you saw dad's pool all right come on yeah my pool could fit in his pool but uh you got a baby pool yeah and uh so <laughs> a baller on a budget pool so every every 30 minutes every every bit of water has been circulated through through my pool so cool. Yeah, so it only takes about if he dumps in there, uh, or you know, if he jumps in with CS gas, I only have to let it sit for about an hour, and then it's fine. I don't have to worry about it. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, so yeah, today's gonna be a pool day. I think I'm just I'm done, done for the day. Well, well, well. 
Like the Jaguars. I'm done. Oh, 29 0, huh? Yeah, 29 0. I mean, it's preseason, so I mean, you're not. Wait, ready. how many snaps did Fall take? I don't know. Let me see if I can pull up the. Uh, he probably didn't take no snaps. Uh, I saw, uh, what's his name? Uh, Austin and his partner were covering some of that shit. What oh, was, were they? Yeah. What does it say? Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can get straight stats. Maybe if I could went to the game stats. There's that. We had good time of possession. Only I'm just interested in, to see if, if, if Foles was in. That's it. I don't even think so because it uh, looks like he wasn't even in the lineup. Okay. Okay. Makes but, sense. Because you know we're going to the Super Bowl. No, yeah. oh, God damn it. I said we. You did. <sighs> Somebody punch me in the face, please. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I was. said we. I don't know if he was. Anyway, let me rephrase. You know the Jags are going to the Super Bowl, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course if, they are. If they buy tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's All right, see. fuck the Jags. Oh, come on, You're man. too Don't, slow. I know. Don't man, this is not making for good podcasting Don't already. Like that. Don't. Well, I mean, we are talking about the Jaguars. Well, you should have had that. Well, that I didn't stuff. know that you were going to start going, hey, I want the uh, I want the stats. I want the, uh, you know, da 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 so. No, all I asked was if Foles was in the lineup. That was it. Yeah, well, I'm trying to find out if he was in the lineup. Well, you said that he wasn't. You didn't see him in the lineup. I know, well, I or, or were you making shit up? I did not see him on the lineup on the page I was looking at that listed. Well, most the likely he wasn't on the lineup then. So I was trying to see if I could find a breakdown lineup of the game. It doesn't matter. We're not going to analyze whether they ran the ball 20 times or 30. Five, 20. Right. Anyway, did you watch the fight last weekend? Did I watch the fights last week? No, I did not, actually, because I did not realize that they started at, like, 2 o'clock in the, the afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. So when I... Uh, I realized that when I went to check my... I was on my phone at, like, 5 in the afternoon, or 6, and uh-huh. was like, oh, hey, Dana, thanks for the uh, posting going, awesome fights. Yeah. I, uh, Shit. I'm like, oh, the prelims should be starting soon. I tune in, and it's the main event. And I see uh, Robbie Lawler in... Uh, Cubby, uh, Colby Covington going at it. Uh, well, actually, it was more like Covington just teeing off on Robbie. Dude, he, man, he, from he, what I heard, <laughs> he just mauled him. He didn't maul him, maul him, but he put on a clinic. Well, like, he, from what I heard, his out, uh, his output level versus Lawler's output level was unreal. Yeah, he threw, like, 500 punches and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like... Jesus Christ, this guy's not going to get tired. And, like, he just took him down over and over and just, I mean. I think he had, like, eight or nine takedowns or some <sighs> shit like that. I hey, think UFC, it, good web page you got going on here today. The what? Web page. It's not coming up, so. Awesome. So, uh, this set up a, a match for a unification. I'm going to call it a unification because... Uh, Colby never lost uh, the interim title. Right. And Usman is the legitimate champion. So interim and legitimate champion are facing each other next, which should be pretty interesting because Kamaru, you know, he's... He's, pretty, a, he's an active dude. He, active fight. Well, he hasn't fought since he won the title because he had some injuries. But um, I'm going to have to go with Colby on this one. Think so. Just because of Holy the out. Sh- of the output. Well, what does it say? All right. So total strikes was Colby will be first. So 198 to 81. Well, that was just landed. Yeah. The output was way higher than that. So significant strikes was 172 to 77. Takedowns was 10 to nothing. Um, God, did he just teed off on his head? 120 significant strikes to the head. Okay. Whew. But what was the total? Uh, it didn't. It doesn't list total. It just well total total strikes, one hundred and ninety eight. Yeah, I yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't show total thrown. This is just strikes. Right. So, but so I mean, if he if he only landed you know fifty percent of his strikes that he threw, then he threw you know four hundred punches for the fight. No, no, he threw more than that. He threw like <laughs> over five hundred. Good God. Yeah, it was crazy. It was it was a ridiculous amount of punches. You know, I like I like Usman, but with the pace that Colby puts on, I I, I don't know if many people are going to be able to keep up with it unless they knock him out like early, early. You know, 
Well, I mean, Usman can. I mean, Usman does kind of have that power. But he's, there, he's, yeah. he's got what one knockout? Uh, yeah, I think so. But I mean, Colby has been running the the mountains with Cam Haynes. I mean, you know, he's got he's got the motor. I know. So y- your cardio game better be on point, or you, mean, or you better start running the mountains with Cam Haynes too. Don't don't get me wrong. Well, well uh, Usman can't run because his knees are shut. They're like bone on bone. So he's got to do like an aerodyne bike or some shit like that. Oh, man, you're not going to get the same running mountains with Cam Haynes. You need that guy behind you yelling, keep hammering and stuff like Maybe that. Maybe he'll, he'll go with David Goggins or something. Go- <laughs> no, Goggins is a runner. He, well, he wants to run. Well, Goggins will sit next to a bike next to him. Calling him, motherfucker, let's go. Let's Just- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I- I'd like to see Kamara retain, but... I just think that Colby at this point, he's just, you know. It's Colby's time, man. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Even though he is an ass, he makes, I mean, he is he is the heel of the UFC a little bit. Well, did you hear the, the comments afterwards? No. Oh. So. I mean, I did see after. I, I he's did, getting a lot of shit for it. I did see that he thanked um, in the ring that, you know, the. Uh, Trump Jr. and Eric Trump were there to see him. Yeah, Donnie and, and, and Eric were and there. He, and, he and the was, little one was there too. Yep. And that he, you know, well, shout out to them yeah. and thank them for coming and this and that. and that, that. They got booed like a motherfucker. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but in his comments after the, the fight, when uh, Anik was interviewing him, and I'm going to quote it here. He said, let's talk about the lesson we learned tonight. It's a strong lesson that Robbie should have learned from his good buddy, Matt Hughes. Stay off the tracks when the train's coming through, Junior. Oh. Doesn't matter if if there's a Trump train or the Colby train. Get out the way. Mm. How does that sit with you? Mm. <laughs> Man. Man, just leave Matt Hughes alone. <sighs> Why you got to be like that? Yeah, well, mm. it is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did. He did say it. So he did, and he's not. He's not sorry about it. Of course not. Because uh, he also went on uh, Misha Tate's uh, Sirix of XM um, show, and they got into it. Really? Yeah. So. <laughs> They 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 banned him. He's not he's not welcome at, oh. at her show. So apparently, you know, I guess she was saying. Let me look it up here real quick. What did she say? Um, Colby, why did you say that? Yeah, pretty much. He was, you know, asking why she, why why does he attack opponents and all that shit. And uh, he threw it back at her, saying, you know, when you were fighting, you were doing the same shit with uh, with Ronda Rousey, talking all this shit. And, you know, basically, how dare you kind of thing. And, you know, you fucking have nude pictures of yourself out there and you're judging me kind of shit. And I didn't know that Misha Tate had naked pictures. Oh, you didn't? Uh-uh. Oh. You know, Misha's one of my favorites. I did. I, I'm surprised you didn't know she had nudes I, out there. I did not know. So when immediately I saw that. Yeah, you immediately I, went, I went on the Misha Tate and nudes. nudes. And let me tell you, she looks really good. She does. They're not bad. You know, I've got a body on her, mm-hmm, and uh, mm-hmm. I was very impressed by her abs. Right. I mean, yes. granted, the rest of the package, the, mm-hmm. the goodies, mm-hmm. yeah, they look good. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something about her midriff. Right. Those abs. I didn't even know she had them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I was more impressed by her abs than her butt and, and boobies. Okay. All right. Well, sorry, Misha Tate. I, I did look at your pictures. Of course, everybody has. Listen, you look great. Yeah. Caraway did not look great next to you. Yeah. That was that's her ex boyfriend, but she did look pretty damn amazing. Yeah. I'm like, man, I want apps like that. And but I love tacos too much. I can see where Colby is coming from. I mean, yeah. I mean, realistically, here, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like. You did. You you talk shit about Ronda. You did what you needed. There again, it's the it's the game that's played. No matter, and I know I've said it so many times. I don't like the game that's played nowadays. I, I don't agree with it. You know, but that you know, it's not going to change because I don't like it. But it is what it is. That's the way it's played now. You you have to stir up controversy. You have to talk shit. You know, you have to drum it up. 
to make it interesting, I guess, for the casuals and get your fight, you know, in front of people. So she did the same shit. So, uh, yeah, I'm with him on that one. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the, uh, you know, leave Hughes out of that. I mean, you know, he was fine with the Trump train. You can say the Trump train thing because I know he's a big Trump guy and MAGA and all like that. That's cool. I mean, leave that shit. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you know, leave leave Hughes alone, man. Hughes, Hughes is, you know, all American hero. Come well, on. there's another story be, uh, also about that. And he's coming from Chael Sonnen. So Chael Sonnen said that Dan Lambert, who's co- uh, manages Colby, mm-hmm. you know, owner of ATT, where mm-hmm. Colby trains at, is best friends with Matt Hughes. So he's saying that possibly Colby check with Matt Hughes first before he said it. Oh, kind of gave and get the he gave you him know. the heads up and got the okay for it. Okay. And I have a problem with that, with him saying that. Why? Because if you recall last year, Joe Rogan mentioned that Colby's just trying to sell a fight. Right. So if Colby's just trying to sell a fight, why are you giving his tactics out? Which is what he, be- uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to let you hear it. Oh, be- no, well, Chael's done. Well, no, oh, because you remember he fucking, Chael lost his shit on Brendan about, you don't talk about that, what goes um, on in the back. Exactly. And I'm going to play it for you guys. Yeah, out there so I remember listen. that. So here you go. I'm going to let you judge it for yeah, yourself. I remember that shit. I was so upset with Joe Rogan. I was so upset with him. Joe has a history of doing this, and I do not know why he does it. Because he's Joe Rogan. And it's inappropriate and it's infuriating, but he has no ill intent. So I'm not mad at Joe. I called Joe yesterday. I called him to talk about this. The pay-per-view starts, and Joe Rogan is covering Colby Covington. For reasons that are unknown to me and that I will never understand, he decides to say that Colby Covington has come out and said crazy things. To garner attention and get your pay-per-view money. To explain to you how wrong that was of Joe to do, I would need this entire show. First off, Captain Obvious, you don't ever disclose the business. Oh, the business. You don't ever turn on the business when you're in it. The business. Any business. Ah, the business again. Business is not just about profits and losses. It is about maintaining information and company secrets. That's not a secret, dumbass. If Colby Covington is coming out and looking for attention so you'll buy the pay-per-view, then God bless him. You're either a worker or you're a mark. And if you're not smart enough to be a worker, then you're a mark. But a lot of people want to be one, myself included. I really enjoy that. Don't ruin the show for me. And don't think because you have some better understanding of a sport that has made you filthy rich when you've never once had to throw a punch that you can come out and reveal a guy's trade secrets. So he said that last year. Yeah, I know. I remember hearing it. And today or a couple of days ago, he's online saying this shit, how Dan Lambert is, you know, Best friends with Matt Hughes and that possibly Colby check with him. All right. You said possibly, which is not confirmed. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. But you're still, you're really, you're, but you're you're giving away a business, a business tactic that you so much, you know, criticized Joe Rogan for. Yeah. It's a little bit hypocritical in my, Uh, uh, in my opinion. Jail. Jesus. Don't get me wrong. I love Chael. I do, too. And, I do, and too. And Chael would run circles around me and twist me up in a pretzel. He, he would. But nevertheless. I mean, yeah, you got to call it. I mean, hey, I got to call you on this one. Yeah. You know, because he did. Because, I mean, there's more. I mean, Here's he went on. He went on for another because I remember oh, listening to it. That video is longer. I caught oh, I it know. off. I know. He went on for another 20 minutes. Well, uh, I don't know how long much more, you no, know, but it's longer yeah, than. No, because I, I, I remember listening to the whole thing. Cause that I, was on his podcast. Yeah, because I listened to his podcast and he did. He went on, you know, he said, I would need the whole podcast. Yeah, he almost used the whole podcast just bitching about it, you know. But, okay, guess what? 90% of us did not need uh did not need Joe Rogan telling us that what Colby's doing is trying to sell a fight. Yeah. 
we've we've all seen it. We've watched it. We've watched the guys talk shit to each other, you know, get into scuff before the fight, do this, do that. After the fight, shake hands, hug. After fight interviews, hey, man, it was just business. Da, da, da. Okay, you do that enough times, the pattern's built up, you Let's start going. Let's talk now. Let's talk now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> th- yeah. He's the only one, him and um, uh, oh, fucking um, Three Piece and a Soda. Uh, Masvidal. Yeah, Masvidal. They're the only ones that are like, you know, no, this is real. You talk shit to me. Yeah. This doesn't end. Right. You know, everybody else, you talk shit, you're going, okay, you're drumming up a fight. But if you notice, also, those two don't really talk shit. They do... The old school, yeah. like Krokop, like Fedor, like the well, old... Well, Fedor don't speak English, so... Well, even he doesn't <laughs> He doesn't talk shit in Russian. You know, they don't talk shit. They just come in, they fucking punch their time card, they do their job, they beat your ass, and then they punch out. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I respect those guys. But, I, you know, I respect the guys that talk shit, that drum up their the interest and things like that. I know what it's for. It's for the masses. It's for... Fucking Chad over there in his aff- affliction shirt with his monster drink and shit like that, you know. Ooh, they go jerk yeah. off on this shit, whatever, you know. I don't need that, you know. I can enjoy the fight without having to hear all the fucking cockfight bullshit. Sometimes I like it when it's funny. There, you know, like the Connor thing when he was talking about uh, Khabib's wife and all that. I thought he crossed the line a little bit, you know. <sighs> well, I mean, a whole lot. Yeah, I, I personally wouldn't do that shit. Like, if you're gonna talk shit about somebody, talk shit about them. Yeah, you know, say like, man, you got a whack haircut or something. I don't yeah. know. You shoot, you shoe smell. Yeah. You know, you, you dump wipe right or something. Yeah. I don't know, something stupid. But you know who? It's, but it, don't bring their family. It into seems it. like jujitsu guys tend to have the good trash talk. MMA fighters. Do you think Dylan Dennis has got good trash talk? Is he a jujitsu fighter? Jujitsu guy? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess, but no, he doesn't have. Are you are you being coy right now? Yeah, or, okay. I am. I am. Yeah, no, he's too busy. Fucking, hi, Connor. <laughs> hi, Connor. Uh, you look really good in your Lambo. Can I ride in the front seat? <laughs> well, apparently, uh, he has some shit to say about uh, the Covington fight too. Who, Dylan? Yeah. Oh, it's get like, the bro, fuck out why are you talking? Because he's a dumbass. It's like, listen. You you beat both of our asses at once. Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. But shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're in Bellator. Yeah. If you were in the UFC, I'd be like, eh, cool. Talk cool. shit. Talk shit. <laughs> Talk shit, get hit. Yeah. Then 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 that happened could that, that fight could happen. Yeah. The only way that you guys are gonna meet is in a grappling match. Yeah. Maybe there, at the, Whole Foods. The, the, yeah, there's no punches <laughs> being thrown. You know? So what did he say? He went off on Kobe and who else? I think he was talking shit about uh, Woodley too. Oh Jesus! Uh, let's see. He he's said, a, he's oh, a, he said Kobe's so sloppy. I thought I was watching UFC one with those choke attempts. Dude, half the guys in UFC one would have beat his ass. <laughs> Hoist Gracie would have. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Tank Abbott could fucking beat his ass. Uh, I don't think so. You don't think Tank Abbott nah. could beat Dylan Danis' ass? No. I don't think so. Okay. Because, you know, at least... I'm talking Tank Abbott from in the prime, not Tank Abbott now. D- D- Dylan Dennis would have just, just made him gas out and just take him into deep waters. Okay. All take right. him down. That he could do. Hey, he'll be Tank Abbott any day of the week. Okay. And, and twice on 1993. Okay. All right. So... I'm not. <laughs> I refuse to believe this because I'm a huge Tank Abbott fan. I don't care. If, it's you just know. like him because he's a white guy that looks like you. No, no it doesn't look like me. No. Uh, I mean, you know, but Dylan's that guy that's behind the two bouncers yelling, yeah, come over here and talk shit now. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, I can't. You're behind the fucking, you know, you're over there in that other sport. You know, come over here. No, I'm good right here. But you come over here and talk shit. Mm. Bitch, stop. Stop it's like, it's it. Like, bro, relax. You you have no business saying anything. You're not even in the UFC. You're dude. in Bellator. You know, call out some guys from Bellator. You know, that's do that. Yeah, do that. Then I'll be like, oh, shit, I got to watch this. Yeah. Because as long as you're calling out guys that are in another organization. I that mean, you're never going to fight. Well, I mean, you never know. But, yeah, you might. But never, nevertheless, he's not there now. No. So... If you're calling out somebody who's in a different organization, I'm like, bro, 
you know, I don't see fucking. I'm not going to see. This I don't fight see. In two I don't years. see. I don't see Co- Co- Kobe Covington coming to Bellator to fight you. You know, he's like right now. He's one of the top stars in the UFC. I see Colby going. Who? <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. Who's the fucking blonde head parrot over there? And uh, so Ben Askren also took to Twitter after that fight. And uh, of course he did. And Tell her me surprised. And it was pretty fucking funny. Of course it was. It's Ben Askren. He goes, uh, he said he apologized to the people for losing to Masvidal because now they got to watch the trash talk between Kobe and Kumaru, which is pretty bad. They had at the UFC post post fight uh, conference. You know, Kumaru was doing uh, interviews with. Yeah, with, I heard them too. They got a little heated. They, I didn't they, see yeah. it. And, and Kumaru's like, "When did your balls drop?" Oh, uh, I was oh, like, "Oh, here we go." Boo. And Col- Colby had the, the the better comebacks, but still, it was like, "Come on, dog, you're you're not a trash talker." You know what they should do? They should like hire their own. They should, you know, one of them should like hire Askren, and then one of them should like hire Chael. And it's be like, hey, y'all two do it for us. We'll do the fight, but y'all two do the trash talk for us. Here's my Twitter. Yeah. Go. Go. <laughs> Make that entertaining. Shit, just just give it to Connor. Connor can play both sides. Oh, yeah, yeah, he can argue with himself. He'll trash talk his own shit. You're a whiskey swag. Says mm-hmm. who? I make yeah. billions of dollars. I make billions. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. So their uh their trash talk was a little was a little weak, but you know, I, I again I, I see I see Kobe winning the the undisputed belt, but I I I rather see Kamaru win, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, I think it, I mean the only it's one of those things where if it does happen, it it would have to it would probably have to happen. I don't know, man. That's it's one of those. I, I want a good fight. I want, I just want a good fight. I don't want another Askren fight kind of thing where it's done in you know. Six seconds. I want a good fight. I want a good back and forth. You know, I want to see some some tactics involved. I want to see some ebbs and flows. I want to see a good fight. You know, but we shall see. I have a feeling that if Kumar doesn't, you know, get a good game plan rolling in the first and withstand the storm, because the problem is, is, you know, with a lot of guys, you know, as long as you can, like, withstand that first round blitz you know the guy's going to tire out a little bit and then the blitz isn't going to be as bad in the second because it's going to be a five rounder so you've got to deal with colby for five rounds coming at you non-stop the thing with colby is that he's not throwing really hard he's just throwing volume yeah he's like nate you know he's just you know non-stop pop 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 and uh dean is the same way you know when he's sparring he doesn't hit you hard. Yeah, but you just don't get time to breathe. No, yeah. He puts on a pace. Yeah. Every time you're trying and, to breathe, you're getting tapped. And that's why I stopped sparring back in 2011. <laughs> because my last sparring session was with Dean Grant <laughs> before he was getting ready for a fight. And you said, you know what? I don't and, want to do this anymore. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> this is not fun. This is not for me. <laughs> that was fucking what? Eight years ago? <laughs> That's when Jiu-Jitsu said, or, or Wallace said, you know what? I'm going to concentrate on Jiu-Jitsu. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty fucking much. I'm tired of acting like a bobblehead. Fuck, I was a white belt. So I was not only getting my ass kicked standing up, so I was getting my ass kicked on the ground. You were just getting your ass kicked. I was getting my ass kicked. Yeah. It's you know, a good thing that board. I was in good shape back then. Right. But. Yeah. Imagine uh, starting your journey now. Mm. <laughs> Now I can defend myself a little bit on the ground, you know? Yeah, but he would still bobblehead your St- ass. Standing up if I ever get into a fight. Hey, listen, just need, this is all you need to know. Pull guard. I'm going <laughs> to try to kick your nuts. Hey, Krav Maga. Yeah. I took three years of Krav Maga. I got pocket sand, so. Pa- <laughs> yeah, I'm going pocket <laughs> sand. I'm going to get some salt like uh, Mr. Fuji. Yeah. Back in the WWE days. I'm going to fucking pocket sand you. Kicking the ball. Speaking of wrestling. Scream at you. This isn't We your just purse. celebrated the 25th year anniversary of the NWO. Nice. Y'all did? Well, yeah. Okay. We just cool. did. I didn't know you were part of the NWO again with your weed. Hey, motherfucker. Once <laughs> you're in the NWO, you're NWO for life. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. So I, I saw the video yesterday of the 25 year anniversary when Hogan turned heel 
Nice. And that uh, people just went crazy. It's funny. Kids I'm, crying in the yeah, stands. Yeah, pretty much. Listen, I was watching uh, the pay-per-view with a friend of mine and uh, and a co-worker. And uh, his name was Phil. Huge Hulk Hogan fan. Huge. Right up until then. Man, when Hulk Hogan turned heel and he did that leg drop on, on Macho. Oh, bro. Like his face just change Dude, you he could, looked he looked like he was going to shed a tear dude you could have you could have like killed people's family members in front of them and they wouldn't have like they wouldn't have had the same effect as it would have of watching hogan turn they'd have been like shit you shot grandma way to go <laughs> but hogan turning heel they were like oh shit like a, a piece of their soul yeah. died it's like eat your vitamins <sighs> get good grades hulkamania 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 died 25 years ago. Fuck all you nerds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine if he could have said that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that would have been so great. But, mm-hmm. you know, it was still. Yeah, so, it was uh, on cable what, TV. Yeah, G rated or PG, whatever the fuck it but is. But yeah, I do remember it. And I do, like, I mean, God, the kids were holding their signs and, like, crying. And, I mean, just people. I remember, you know, people talking about it. Dude, did you see Hogan? Bro, I used to like love for weeks. the Monday Night Wars. I loved it. I was I used to watch both. Like flick back flip back and forth. Yeah. Cause you know, one was on commercial break and the other one wasn't. Yeah. So you could be like boop, 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 boop. Fucking Angel had two TVs and he watched both at the same time. <laughs> I know. I didn't have two TVs, so we weren't rich like no, Angel. No, no, we we wasn't rich like Angel, so that's why I used to pick at Amanda because when I were, we were kids and I would go to her house, they had like a TV in the living room and then a TV in the uh, the den, and then they each uh, her and her brother they had a TV in their room, and then her mom had a TV in their Damn. room. So I was like, y'all motherfuckers was rich, loaded, yeah. y'all were rich, y'all got TV in every room. Oh, and a TV in the kitchen too, a little just a little TV that was under the counter. Yeah. I was like, man, y'all were rich. She's like, no, we're not. It's like, man, y'all got a TV in every room. Y'all rich. That's what you try to marry here. Yeah, I'd marry yeah, up. Yeah, for you're, sure. You're trying to get her money and shit. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's like, you think we'll have a TV in our room? Yeah, now look at me. Yeah. You got TVs in your bathroom, in your no, garage. No, I have a TV. I have a TV pool. in my living room, and the kids have TVs, and then there's a TV on the back porch. I don't even have a TV in my master. I used to. Took that shit out. Yeah. Yep. Said nope. Done. Get it out of here. I don't have a TV in my room. No, you have a projector. I have a projector. Big deal. Big difference. I know. I'm rich. You rich? <laughs> uh, no, because I I found out that like we would we would lay in the bed and we'd watch TV and then you'd wind up going like man we really need to be going to sleep instead of watching TV. So then I was just like man let's get rid of this thing let's get it out of the room. So then that way when you it's time to go to bed we just go to bed. So that's what we did, and it worked out good. What's up, Chuck? Dad, oh, dad, he's over in Vegas with my little sister. Your dad? Mm-hmm. Yep. Damn. Yeah. Listen, I just want to put it out there for your dad. If he's looking to adopt a third child, right? You know, because I'm sure he gets tired of you at some point. Oh, sure. I'm sure he gets tired of your little sister. No, he, she's always been the favorite. Since I'm she sure she up. gets he gets tired of your little sister. No, never. I'm sure he gets tired of your little sister. Vegas, baby. Yeah, I know. So I, I could, I could be. You, you want to fill in? I could be that alternate child. You know that? Hey, I'm tired of these two motherfuckers. And plus, you're not white. I know, dude. Minority points. Fuck Telling yeah! You. Woo! Like I'd be able to get him into like the nice Puerto Rican restaurants and right? shit like that. You can order the back, the shit from the from back of the, the kitchen. Back, yeah. I could go talk Ooh. to the chef and shit. It'd be Ooh. like, hey, orale que pasa, brother. Man, I'm telling you, Chuck, you might want to look into this. Is that what we're calling him now, Chuck? Yeah, I call him Chuck. <laughs> Chuck Daddy? Yeah, Chuck Daddy. It's <laughs> a good name for him, Chuck Daddy. Anyway, just put it out there, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, we can add you to the list. There's a long list of people. That <laughs> <laughs> can your dad adopt me? No, there's a list. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What are they doing in Vegas? Uh, my little sister's birthday, and it's not for a couple weeks. <sighs> But so they, but they had a open weekend. Let me guess. She wants to go see the the thunder down on the. No, no. But I'm sure they'll probably. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm sure they'll probably go see a Cirque show, at least. She don't want like meat flopping in her head. No. You know, like woo. 
No, nah, I don't think she wants to go see the Come thunder on. from down under. She might. Hell, I don't know. Why Spike with her? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hell. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. But he's Spike is a good man. He is a good man. He'd be like, you know what, honey? You go see that meat. Go go see some wings. Go see some wings. <laughs> Enjoy it. Because they're all gay anyway, so yeah, go see it. exactly. Yeah, go see it. It's not a big deal. Except the guy that says that he's gay, but he's really not. Yeah, okay. And, and takes advantage of all of them. Is that what it is? Is that yeah. how it works out? Yeah. Well, you know, I've worked the business. Oh, have you? Here I am disclosing secrets of oh, the business. You're going to piss off Chael. <laughs> oh. I only ever worked as a bouncer. And that's where I learned that most 99% of problems in strip clubs are caused by the girls, not the guys. Back in the day, there was a rule that girls couldn't come in alone. They had to come in with a guy. I don't know if your strip club that you worked at had that rule. No. But when we were going constantly to the strip clubs in, in like these groups, mm-hmm. you know, and one of our girls wanted to go in, like, you know, went in by herself. They're like, uh-uh, you got to be in here with a guy. One for one. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Nah, this one, the one I bounced at for a little bit was not the best one. <laughs> Studs pup? I <No. laughs> No. I bounced at uh, Trout River Liquors. They had a strip club? Yes, they did. Oh, wow. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. It was, uh, it was f- fun, sure. It was interesting. Man, I bet there was a lot of drugs going in there. Ooh, yeah. There was a lot of some bitches snorting mm. like cocaine in the back room. Mm. God. <laughs> And the girls, man, they would be sitting there just doing shit, and you'd be like, yo, you can't... Because you couldn't kick the girls out, you know, the, the dancers. You couldn't kick the dancers mm. out. But well, you, they work there. Yeah. So I'd have to kick the guy out. And I'm like, yo, you can't be giving a blowjob in the corner. You got to go, guy. And he's like, I've paid. I'm like, yeah, I know. Take it up with her later. Sucker. But you got to go. Destiny, you're in the back pole. Destiny, yeah, back pole. Oh, my God. I hated that place. I, I, I worked it for like a week or two. I was like, I'm out. Peace. Take care. You know, nope. I did enjoy going to, you know, because we used to go as groups. <laughs> we went to uh, the dollhouse. Used to like going to the dollhouse. Uh, one of the classier ones. Oh, there wasn't a lot of, yeah, you know, air quotes. On that one. <laughs> well, the funny thing that you kind of learn if you if you know enough people and you learn about some of the clubs is the dollhouse was um, kind of protected by the, the, the motorcycle clubs. Never saw them there. Yeah. Um, but then again, I never got in trouble anyway. Uh, yeah. So I only but, got in trouble at Wacko's. Really? You got <laughs> trouble at Wacko's? Wow. We used to have to go. One of the foremen I worked with, he loved going to lunch at Wacko's, and that's why I, that's where I learned the term day strippers. It's like, hey, can I have the the burger? Hold the hold the pubic hair. Yeah, I'm like, uh, oh my god, where do you shovel these things in Wacko's? During I can't, the I can't day? imagine the food being any good. Mm. And the day strippers, let's be honest, they were not all that great. No, that's they, why they're they, called they were, day strippers. They were the night rejects. Exactly, that's why they're called day strippers. But um, so we're we we go to the dollhouse and we're there with a friend of mine, PJ. Bless him. He he passed years ago. Um, it's twenty first birthday, and there's like a group of six, seven of us, and me and my buddy were sitting at the bar and we're drinking. Because, you know, Dollhouse, you had to have a drink. Mm-hmm. You know, that was, you know, one drink minimum. JR's was the same way. Yep. Got to so, have a drink in hand. So we're sitting there at the bar, and where we're positioned at, we can kind of see where where they take you up into the upper deck there for your dance. And we're sitting there drinking, and, you know, PJ's getting his, you know, 21st, you know, his 21st birthday dance. And, you know, the girl bends over in front of him, yeah. you know, and she's doing her thing. And I'm watching PJ, and I'm like, man, look at PJ. He's living life. And, and as soon as I say that, I see PJ go, and he licks his finger, and he sticks it in her. <laughs> and as soon as he did that, who was Jason? My buddy Jason was sitting right next to me. As soon as he did that, I just looked at Jason and said, chug your drink. 
And he goes, why? I said, just chug your drink. We're getting ready to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and before I, you know, I could say anything else, you hear the commotion. Now, PJ, short look, he, his head came up to about my middle of my chest. Yeah, your nipples. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. little, little dude. Yeah. You hear the commotion of the bouncer going over there and literally grabbing him by his head and lifting him up and dragging him out of there. And my buddies who didn't know what's going on, they're freaking out, you know, hey. And me and Jason are at the bar just chugging our drinks real quick, slamming them down on the counter. Say, hey, thanks for the drinks. We'll see y'all later, you know. Yeah. Trying to calm the rest of our group down. Hey, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Just come on. Let's go. You know, and then we all get outside. And PJ's like, I don't know what I did wrong. I'm like, you shut the fuck up. Well, I saw what you did. You know, we saw what you did. Yeah, you can't do the old finger trick on the girl. You know, huh. don't do that. Yeah. Come on. Oh, man, it's 21st birthday. I don't give a sh- She don't give a shit. Yeah. You know. She don't know you like she that. She don't know you like She don't care. But there again, this was, you know, same guy years later. I think she likes me. No, she doesn't. No. She does not like you. She likes her money. She likes your money. She's going to talk to you like she likes you, that she's really interested in what you got to say. She could care less. You know, she's going to medical school. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. And that's why I, I used to like going there because, you know, me me and Jason, we were the only guys that we, we kind of had nice, steady girlfriends. And we would go with the guys and we'd go to the strip clubs and we'd sit at the bar and we would milk our drinks. You know, we wouldn't get hammered. And we would talk to the strippers and we'd talk to the to the bar maids and stuff like that and girls would be like hey you want to dance but no we're good yeah you sure i'm like yeah we're good you know how's it going tonight how's business what's going on you know how are things going and we'd sit up there and we'd just talk and bullshit with people you know have a good time like that so you know we got to know a lot of the djs and the bar girls and the strippers and we'd see them be like oh hey chris hey jason hey what's up girls and we go sit at the bar and do our thing and chill and all the rest of the guys Ooh, let's get lap dances you know, girl be like, hey, you know, you want to lap dance? You don't have to pay me. I'm like, no, this is your job. It's cool. And I don't want to lap dance. It's fine. Yeah. You know, what's your real name? You know, I know your name is not Destiny. It ain't Lexus. Get the fuck out of here. It's cinnamon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody names their kids Cinnamon. You know, come on. Okay. It's Dolce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they had the greatest names. Candy. Yeah. We saw a girl one night. We went up to uh, the one here on the north side. It used to be called Nick's. Um, and the girl, she was trying to do a little pole trick, you know, where they do the little flip on the pole. Please tell me she fell. She did. <laughs> she did. After, after, she smashed her face into the light bar. Because <laughs> she was too high on the pole when she flipped. So she smashed basically the front of her teeth out. Ooh. And then she fell. Ooh. And finished you know, kind of finished off the rest of them. So then they were like, we're going to need, you know, it's going to be a little break. We, uh, we need to clean the stage. And they're like sweeping teeth. <laughs> and we're like, oh, we're my going to need an intermission. Oh, when do you have an intermission at a strip club? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get Gucci's teeth up off the floor. Oh, yeah, man. that was that was bad. Hey, I was Christ. actually I was actually sitting in the DJ booth with her buddy when that happened. I was like, because his booth was a little back off of the stage so you can kind of see and she, i was watching and she really jumped high on the bar and i was like "Ooh!" and then she went to flip and i was like oh, and you oh. there's nothing you can do and she just whop i went oh, yeah. and then smash and was like oh fuck and it <laughs> my buddy just does his little effect with the old record skip just, <laughs> i'm like really <laughs> you know he's like yeah you can clean up i'm like fuck Clean up on the main stage. Clean up on the main stage. Best strip club I ever went to was uh, Spearman Rhino in uh, yeah. which one? Los Angeles. Oh. Uh, Los Angeles. There was a cover charge. When when there's a cover charge. Yep. You at the spot. You at the spot, bro. Yep. It's twenty dollars just to get in. Woo. Yep. All them bitches, tens and a few elevens. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They all looked like they were airbrushed. Of, of course. I mean, I'm sure some of them were. Well, because they're they're out there looking for, you know, their next acting. You know, they're probably all there to, to get acting gigs or probably, you know, they're there to make it. The, they're going to make it big. Either that or the, the the cover of Playboy something. But, yeah, I was I was like, wow, 
This is how they like after I went to LA in two thousand and four. Kinda ruined you, didn't it? Well, I never went back to a strip club anywhere else. Yeah, it kinda ruins you like I, I think I've been to another strip club. Where, where was it? I, I've been to one again, but it was like because oh, the go club. But those were for fight uh what was it? Fight parties, like the after parties. Mm. But I'm like, I'm not getting lap dances here. You're crazy? Nah. I've been to LA. Come on, Ezra. Yeah. And now I'm to the point now where it's like, hey, you want to lap dance? And oh, and I can't say his name because, you know, he's got a wife and kids and all that shit. Right. But one of our buddies was moving, and uh, we took him out to uh, to the golf club. We got him so drunk. It wasn't even funny. Like, he was puking, like, in the car and shit. Ugh. Yeah. I, I think I spent, like, $300 that night. Mm. Not on me. On him. Mm. Yeah. My buddy got his hand sliced open at the gold club. I'm like, take him back there. Have fun. Yeah. Do your thing. Give him a rub down. Had fun. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I take it back. I went also one more time to the gold club, and he was for uh, Angel's bachelor party. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a guy pulled a knife out on uh, my buddy Dean one night. Dean was drunk. God, he's so fucking drunk. And Dean literally sat there and looked at him, looked at the guy, and looked at the knife. For some reason, Dean's thought process was, this is a Looney Tunes cartoon. So, you know, in the Looney Tunes cartoon, like if a guy pulls a gun, you just put your fingers in the barrel. So the guy pulls the knife. Dean just reached and he just grabbed the knife blade. Oh, he pulled back. And the guy, he looked at the guy, he goes, what are you going to do now? And the guy just went, uh, phoop, and just pulled it out of his hand. If I can cut the tendons in his, in his oh. fingers. So then Dean got to spend six months with his fucking fingers and like little fishing lines super glued to his fingernails and down to his wrist to let the tendons heal and all like that. And I'm like, what did you think you were doing? He's like, I wasn't thinking I was drunk. I was like, okay, cool. That that makes sense. That totally makes sense. That checks out. I know somebody else who wasn't thinking this week. Who's that? Cyborg? Tito Ortiz. Oh, God. What did he do? Apparently, he went on social media and said that uh, he could do better than DC against John Jones. Did, I was waiting for you to hit your laugh track or something. <laughs> I don't have a laugh track. Okay. Wow. So he apparently said that uh, he could uh, get inside and basically overpower John in some positions. As he's falling from. As to which, you know. DC just pretty much just laughed. Yeah, what else can you do? And uh, I guess or Ortiz was like, you know, he he tried to apologize to both John and DC for the comments. And I'm like, dude, you, you already said it. Why, why are you apologizing now? You are you apologizing because you're embarrassed? Somebody hacked me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you apologizing because, you know, you're embarrassed because, you know, that that's not really going to happen or what? What? You know, what's the deal? It's like, are you not? Do you genuinely think that? Are you trying to get back like into the news? I want to I, I want to sit down with you. I'd like to sit down with you, Tito, over a nice dinner. You know, we'll grill some steaks or something. And I would just be like, Tito, genuinely, just me and you. Nobody else has to know. No, no, no. He's got to come on the podcast. No, no. no Everybody got to know. No, no, no. That. I, I Let's keep even, it real, Tito. I won't even put him on the Do spot. Do you really think that you're going to control John yeah. in any position? I won't even put him on the spot like that. I'll just be like, look, bro. You know, and did you enjoy the steak? Was it a good steak? You know, you want something else to drink? Cool. Yeah. Uh, about that thing, do you, do you realistically in your head think you could beat John Jones? Just wonder. You know? <laughs> just, you know, between me and you, won't go any further. Just let me know. So that way I can sleep better tonight. Yeah. And then he'll be like... I was drunk. Like, okay. <laughs> all right. You know what, dude? We all make mistakes. That's cool. You know, I'm glad to see you owned up to it. Man, we move on. It's not well, a problem. Well, again, he tried to apologize. He said, I respect both of those guys tremendously. And uh, for the first time in my career, I was in the wrong. Really? No shit, bro. Because if you, you were, were to wrong, try to, if you were trying to get in on John Jones, he would grab you by the head. He would feed you knees like cereal. And then you would go sleep. <laughs> or if you would go, you know what, I'm going to do the old school me and I'm going to shoot in. He would feed you a knee like a cereal and you would go asleep or he would kick you like you've never been kicked before because, you know, guys didn't kick like that in the UFC days when he was fighting like John. 
It's a it's a totally different fighter from when he was in his prime. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt. You know, no back doubt. in those days, it was matchup versus matchup. You know, ooh, we have a striker versus a wrestler. You know, or we have judo versus, the, you know, that's what the fights were back, you know, back in those days. You know, ooh, this guy's got wrestling. Now it's just, well, we have a MMA fighter versus an MMA fighter. Go. They know it all. They've got a little bit of everything. Some of them are a little better, maybe at this aspect, but they can all punch. They can all kick. They can all grapple. You know, some of them are better. I mean, granted, they're not champ, 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 you know. They don't have two gold medals. Or All right, let's, let's make it fun then. All right. Pull up the top 10 on the 205 uh, division. Uh, rankings? Yeah. Let's see who's out there. Let's take a look. All right. Let, let's see. So light let's heavyweight. start with number 10. All right. So light heavyweight, right? Uh-huh. 205. Number 10. Glover, Tr- Glover yeah. Texera. Yeah. Does Tito beat Glover Texera? Mm, no. Okay. Let's move on to number nine. Okay. Uh, Lily or Lilith? Latif? Latifi. Yeah, that guy. Lion King. Does he beat Latifi? I don't know. Today. I'm, I've never seen Latifi. Okay, I'll tell you right now. Okay. He does not. Okay, cool. Who's number eight? Uh, Corey Anderson. Does he beat Corey Anderson? Mm, no. Fuck no. No. Corey Anderson will whoop his ass. Sorry, Tito. It's a fact. Yeah. Number seven. Vulcan. <laughs> Okay. Volcom has got <laughs> no time for you. Move on. Number six. Alexander Gustafson. That's Listen, the, that may be the only one that he, nah. that he could have the slightest. Nah. And the only reason why I say slightest is because I think Gustafson is one foot out of the game, one foot in. No. Gustafson is completely retired. He retired. Okay. However. So, so Tito could stand in the ring and be like, well, he didn't show up. Gustafson would maul him. Yeah, good God, he's so much he's so much taller. That reach would be, you know, fight and before Tito could get out of the fucking corner, he already got punched. Okay. What the fuck? So let's move on. Number five. Uh Yan Black Blackovich. Black, Blackovich. Blackovich. Did you see what he did to look Rockhold? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what Tito would get. <laughs> yeah. Number four. Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes is undefeated. He's a prospect. He is on a tear. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. So he beat Uzdemir. Mm-hmm. Recently, I think it was his last fight. Yeah. So, Uzdemir beats Tito. Yeah. Reyes beat Uzdemir. Let's do MMA math here for just for shits and giggles. It still doesn't T- add up. T- Tito doesn't beat Reyes. Okay. Next, Anthony Smith. Okay, we're we're not even yeah. we're not even entertaining this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, he gets he gets beat. Okay. To uh, Tiago Santos. Tiago Santos just fought on a broken leg against the number one guy in that division. You think that Tiago Santos could not handle Tito Ortiz today? Yeah. No. Okay. okay. And then number one is Cormier. Wait, I thought it was John. John was a champ, no? Yeah, John's the champ. Then DC's number one. And okay. Then, then Jones is champ. Laughable if yeah. he thinks that he could beat DC. Mm-hmm. Laughable. Okay. All right. So, I mean, so, okay, so we know that. Tito could go to heavyweight. And, and fight who? Uh, Pull up the top 10. Let's see who in the top 10 he can beat. Okay, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Sorry, Tito. You know. Yeah. I legend can't, I mean, of I, the sport and all that, but, you know, your time has come and gone. Yeah, so you know what? Be the legend of the sport. Yeah, just... Be an ambassador. Yeah. Don't 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 try to get in the news just because you say that you can beat Johns today, you know. Or or I'm sorry, you you say you had a better chance. Okay. Than DC. All right. So let's have some. Let's let's just have some more fun then. Okay. Let's go down a weight class. We'll leave Tito at 205. He's not gonna. He's not gonna go to 85. No, no. Let's leave Tito at one of, or 205. We'll leave him at 205. Okay. Can he beat? Uh, we'll just. You think he can beat Weidman? Probably not. Okay. Whiteman's a little bit younger. You think he can beat Yoel? Fuck no. Okay. You think he can beat uh, Israel? Adesanya? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. You think he can beat Whitaker? Hell no. Okay, cool. Let's go down two weight classes for fun. You're going to 170? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's just have some fun here. Um, You think he can beat Till? Darren Till? Mm Mm-hmm. He'll take him down. Probably, okay. Probably slice okay, him up. Okay, so so we're we're at two weight classes down, and the yeah, best he, we've got now is he could probably take him down. Yeah, okay. and slice him open. Sure. 
Um, you think he could beat uh, Dos Anjos? Ooh. Okay. Ooh, that's... You, you got to remember, Tito's so much better. I understand that. Okay. Possibly, more, yeah. More, more fun. What about uh, Masvidal? <sighs> think Tito can handle that three-piece in a soda? If Masvidal comes in like at 185, 190, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, you think you're going to take on MMA Jesus? And listen, if anybody... I mean, we're still... We're talking two weight classes down. Anybody out there watching the the, the stream, feel free to call and just say, you know, you're an idiot. Tito, sure, Tito, sure. Tito would beat Masvidal and tell me why. I don't think he can. Colby? I think I think he's too old. Colby? Mas, Ma, no, probably okay. not. Woodley? I'm sorry. No. Because okay. Woodley comes heavy. Okay. Woodley comes out of like around 190. So then, of course, it would have to go Usman. I mean, no, no, I don't, I don't think he beats Usman. Okay, we'll just go three weight classes down. You're not. We'll vote the champ. Can he beat Khabib? No. Okay. I don't think he could. So if I think, if, I think listen, from what I hear, Khabib gives DC problems in the gym. Yeah, I've heard the same. So we're we're three weight classes down. It's your two oh five where you fight. Three weight classes down, and you probably couldn't beat the champ at three I weight think, classes I, down. I think he beats everybody at one forty five, one thirty five, and yeah, I could see him beating Holloway. Max Holloway, yes, the champ. He's too, too he's too, big. Yeah, he's too, too big, big, too strong. He's definitely he would definitely just overpower Cejudo. And he could beat up the girls. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think I put my money on on Amanda <laughs> <laughs> and Cyborg. Dude, how much of a fucking shit show has that been this week, dude? So the, what the. Actual fuck fuck. So funny thing, Misha Tate called it out also. She saw the video and immediately said, Bullshit. This is bullshit. This is not aligning with what he's saying. These subtitles are not the same. So apparently uh, it was her production team Mm -hmm. that went behind her back and did all this. So supposedly, allegedly, because they, you know, she and Dana were beefing after she got released last week, which, by the way, that was breaking yeah. news. Yeah, we literally we went we, off. We finished up the podcast. Yeah. Literally, Wallow left. I was putting on my shoes to work out and literally saw the alert come over my phone and text or called him while I was putting my shoes on. It was like, bro, Cyborg just got released by the UFC. Yep. We had just stopped doing the podcast like five minutes. So I immediately hit up Brandon so he could break the news because he was about to start up start up his podcast. So so after she got released, there was you know yeah. shit back and forth between her and Dana and and shit like that. But she did the right thing when she realized what was going on because this was not, she didn't have any knowledge of the video being you know doctored or which is weird. Anyway. She was the one that came out and said, hey, I apologize for this. This is not right. I don't, you know, I don't condone this shit. And he, she apologized to the UFC and Dana. Which is good. Which Dana, you know, said thank you. You know, which is kind of odd, but. Well, I mean, what else is he going to do? Is there, There's no reason to kick, kick her while apparently, she's down. Apparently, he doesn't have an issue with her. Apparently, the issues are with her team, her manager. Who happens to be her boyfriend? Well, and ap- be. apparently, he's the one that's difficult to deal with, and not her. Well, I mean, it's a story that's been told a Many thousand times. times. Yeah. So, but Dana did say that he offered her the Amanda fight, and that that fight was turned down. So, did she turn it down, or was it her team, her management team, that said no? You know, because right now it looks like Valentina wants to fight Amanda for a third time. Champ versus champ, but you got to remember, Valentina's the the 125 champ. Yeah. And Amanda is the 135 and 145 champ. So at what weight class did you do this? Do you do it at 135 or 145? Because Amanda doesn't cut that much weight for 145. Yeah. And I'm assuming that... Do you let her her be champ, champ, champ? She can't make 125. You don't think so? No. She's a big girl, bro. Yeah. And I don't mean like, like no, fat, I mean her, like, no, like her, frame. her structure. Yeah, her frame is. All right, who's, who's commenting? I can't, I can't see. Well, I don't see anybody. 
Dad's commented a few times. That's it. No, there's somebody else. Is uh, there? I don't see anybody. Fuck, he disappeared. I can't see it on my screen. Okay. If you got any comments, feel free to give us a call. The numbers I'll, I'll, out there. Ref, I'll refresh, but it yeah. may you may get the volume back real quick. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Turn here. it down. Boop. Okay. Uh, Dan is a douche canoe. He's just like cyborg since Tito Ortiz was her manager. Well, I mean, Tito definitely didn't do her any favors. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see. Dana doesn't like Tito. Had issues with Cyborg because of the comments that they made in that podcast from Australia. You know, Rogan, Hinchcliffe, and Dana on the plane. Yeah. You remember that shit? Oh, yeah, yeah. So they've had issues ever since, and she wasn't even in the UFC then. Yeah. So. I mean, even though that literally was one of the funniest jokes ever. Yes. I mean, it was. Yes. I, I ain't, I ain't going to lie. That shit was funny. I mean, it was. It had me in stitches. It did. But I took it as a joke. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, obviously, it offended her. Oh, it did. And Rogan it, said he apologized to it, her it and hurt, did it like that. It hurt her feelings. And, sure. You know, rightfully so. Yeah. You know, if uh, if Hinchcliffe said that, you know, uh, did I shave my vagina today? I'd probably butt her too. I'm like, I ain't got no yeah. vagina. But it's a joke. But it's a joke, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I agree. Dana, Dana, that, Dana is a douche. I mean, he's always been douchey, and it's it definitely seems like it's gotten worse. Over the last couple years, you know, but he's always kind of been, but I mean, he's in that position. He can be, Hey, it's, it's this or get the fuck out. Well, when the UFC was sold, his contract was renewed for seven years. What do you do after the seven years? Do you keep him on or do you say, bye Dana? Thank you for everything. We need to bring some new blood in. What would you do if you were a uh, Ari Emanuel? I don't know. I really don't because I don't know who you would bring in. To Listen, he's kind of almost the face of the UFC. He is. If you start seeing somebody else getting the 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 FaceTime other than Dana, then I then I think that may you, you might start seeing the writing on the wall that Dana's not going to re up after a seven. But so far, nobody else is doing. You know, even the owners they don't really have any FaceTime. It's Dana. Well, it's a group, but, you know, the group is... It is, his but... head is Ari Emanuel. That's the big cheese. Yeah, but you don't ever see him. Yeah. Uh-uh. You know? Um, I mean, he's got so much other shit yeah. going on. But it's Dana. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It's like, do you replace him? What happens if he does leave? Because you know... I'm sure, I'm sure that if Dana leaves, Joe's out, too. Joe'll be like... I think, oh. Joe, I think Joe's out this next... The, his next renegotiate anyways. I don't think so. I think so. I I think so. I because uh, have you did you listen to the have you listened to his latest one with Shab? Yeah. Yeah. You hear him talking about how he, he's already ready to get. He's done with L.A. Oh yeah, he did. He's but he doesn't have to live in L.A. to no uh, no. But, but I I think he's I think he's getting to that point where he's. I didn't hear where he wanted to move though. He's probably wanting to go to Colorado, Montana, someplace like that. Makes yeah. sense. Same place as I want to go. I'm I'm done with people. Listen, I wanted to go to Montana on vacation. No, I'm wanting I'm wanting to go someplace where there's more animals than there is people. I'm just you know, it's getting too crowded around here. Dude, they keep building they do. and building. They're building apartments building. literally, you know, blocks away from here. Yeah. Uh townhomes are going up up the street over here. The roads aren't getting bigger. No. It's. Uh, this is going to be a shit show in like another 10 years. Yeah. And I'm just. I'm seriously considering moving too. I'm not. I don't want to be here for the shit show. I mean, I've got 10, you know, I've got 10 years. Tyler will be 20. Tegan will be. 97. No, she'll be 20. <laughs> she'll be 24. So hopefully by that time, they'll will be starting to spread their wings and go. Um. We're we'll gonna have to do the show on Skype or something. Yeah, we'll do something. But <laughs> but you know, and I'm hoping you know, I'll be fifty something. Amanda will be fifty. You'll be fifty two, bro. I'll be you're 50, 40. Yeah, I'll be fifty two. Amanda will be fifty. Um, God, you know, you're gonna dump her for a younger one? Pff, hell 50, no. Fifty, bro. Hell no, I ain't dumping her for anything. Bro, I'm not dumping her. She gonna be fifty. You gotta yeah. get rid of her. No, for, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not need, chasing that young. You tail. need. You need the younger mom. Mm. Young tail is stupid. <laughs> What am I going to talk to him about? I'm kidding. Fucking Pokemon. I'm or some kidding. Shit? Damn, you went really young. <laughs> right. I didn't say get a seven year old. Oh, Jesus Christ. I said, you know, a younger one. But God, you pedo. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now I'm a racist and a pedo. Uh, 
but I'm just I'm literally I'm just waiting for her to not be tied to Mayo. She's already because she's kind of already prepped a little bit. She's licensed now in all 50 states with her nursing license. Go anywhere. So it's like, bro, say the word. I'm I'm gone. The only thing that would suck if I moved to like a place like that, like Colorado, Montana, fucking snow. And yep. Gets cold, bro. Oh, bro. Like, I think I would last like a year and then I'd be like, ah, I got to find a more tropical place. You know, but the, <laughs> the way I look at it, though, is, man, I can put on clothes and I can get warmer, but you can only do so much and get cooler. Bro, you can jump in your pool. I know. But it's still, I mean, yeah, but I, I can't work and do stuff in the pool. I can only float in the pool. I have to work outside. I have to do stuff outside, you know. Literally, the, these last couple of weeks, by 9, 30, 10 o'clock, it looks like I've been swimming. My shirt is completely soaked. My pants are wet down to my knees. You know, I'm soaked. I'm sweating. I'm going through seven to ten bottles of water a day. Yeah, three of these hey bro, a day. Heat is good for you. Don't you don't you listen to Dr. Rhonda Patrick? Heat is good for you when you no, want there you it. Go. When you want heat. But when you don't have a choice in the matter, it sucks. Stop being a pussy. And I'm just tired of the driving. I'm tired of sitting in traffic. Bro, I don't I don't drive that much and I'm trying. I'm tired of the driving. Yeah, you live in the shit show of traffic. Well, luckily enough, if I'm not going to the gym, I'm like literally 10 minutes away from yeah home. you're boop boop and back yeah so in these past couple of weeks because dean is up in maine and i haven't been going to the gym yeah i get what was that uh email oh i've been i've been just going home like i haven't filled up my car in two weeks yeah because yeah. i haven't driven that much just yeah. from home to work work home yeah no i'm done i'm just i'm i'm ready to idaho who the hell yeah something. idaho North Dakota. So probably not North Dakota. That Ugh. might be a little too cold. South Dakota. Fucking Minneapolis and shit. I'm just, you know, ready Michi to, Michigan. I'm ready to go. No, I don't think I want to go to Michigan. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm, Amanda would like Alaska. We know some people that live in Alaska. That I've, I've got a friend of mine that lives in Alaska. He loves it up there. Um, hell, I'd love it up in Alaska. You know, he too works. Cold for me. He works, you know, fucking seven months out of the year, you know. It's awesome. He sends us pictures. I've got a couple pictures. He's he sent me, you know, fucking eagles on his back porch, and you know, moose in his front yard, and you know, I'm I'm just I'm ready to go rural. I'm ready to go back to you know woods. Well, now that I'm doing what I should have done, you know, fucking twenty years ago, and find you know something to do that I really like, right? Like photography, mm -hmm. which I'm doing now, going to school for it, and start traveling. I mean, you know, I'm, that's probably going to be right there. Yeah. One of the things that I want to do. You got to start doing those, those, for those, uh, photography camps. Oh, no. But you got to start doing those things that the, the places, the, all the photographers have to, you know, you got to go to the, the Grand, desert. Grand Canyon. Yeah. You, you know, that, my little sister did that. You know, she yeah. went through the desert and slept like she had. I'm not going to sleep in the desert. Get fuck out of here with that shit. Dude, she, dude, she was like, camping in her i think at the time she had a bug she had one of the newer volkswagen bugs it's either that or her no actually it was it was her element uh same element your she, sister's got a bigger dick than me dude she has uh, i ain't doing that dude shit. she's crossed i she has crossed the united states i want to say she's done it three or four times good for her yeah she's a stud she is dude she's done shit where i'm just like yo that's sketchy if i can't get there <laughs> by plane uh, i probably won't be going well, that's what's funny is I told Amanda because I want to go, you know, we're kind of planning on it here in a couple of years. I want to go for Christmas to uh, a lodge up in Yellowstone and I want to spend like a week or two up in the Yellowstone Lodge. Yeah. Um, and so I was asking her, I was like, you know, do you want to drive or do you want to fly? Well, if you fly, you can spend more time out there. And that was the kind of the thing. She's if like, you drive, you're like spending a week getting there. You spend a couple of days. In it's the three, drive. It's, it's uh, two and a half days, two and a half day drive, two and a half days wasted. Well, is but to you, see, you look at it as two and a half days wasted. I want to get to my destination as quick as possible. But see, I'm I'm kind of uh, to me, the travel, the the whole thing is the experience. Well, if I'm going into Winnebago and somebody's driving, cool. Well, that's just it. I'm the one driving. It's not like she's driving any fucking thing. 
Uh, and I'm not. We wouldn't do the Winnebago. We would mm-hmm. probably do the truck or something like that. But it would just be like me and her. Fuck that. But yeah, I mean, I, I. But there again, though, I enjoy driving. You know. Okay. Like I mean, you you fucking sat in the passenger seat all the way up to Atlanta. I be bopped along, and we That's had a right. good old trip. Yeah. yeah. And I, I wasn't driving. Yeah, it doesn't bother me one bit. I can. I've done that to Atlanta and back in one day, one night. Mm, fuck you know? that. Yeah, doesn't bother me. Yeah. So. I'm glad it don't bother you because it bothers me. <laughs> I'll be like, fuck that. I ain't doing that bullshit. <laughs> That's the bullshit. Yeah. I, I, I ain't down with that, bro. But yeah, but then when, when I told her what the hour count was for the drive, she was like, what do you think? I was like, uh, yeah, you want to fly. I know. I just thought I would ask. So. But then you you miss so much of the, the countryside and you, you miss, you know. So much of these the little oddities that you get to see, you know, like even when I went to Tampa, my buddy flew down from New York and stayed the night here and we drove down to Tampa. That's uh, a four hour drive. It's a four hour drive, but I didn't go 10 to 75. I took him down 301. I took him down through real Florida, you know, you took him to the swamp. Yeah, I took him down through the swamp, down around through Lake City and Ocala and, you know, stuff like that. Took him down. And he's like, what is that? I'm like, oh, that's the mud bogs. <laughs> oh, that's Gainesville. Yeah, that's the mud bogs. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, you know, he's, he's a black guy from New York. I was like, you want to go check it out? He's like, fuck no. I'm like, why? He's like, uh, first off, I'm black. And second off, I'm from New York. I'm like, uh, third, you're with me. You're fine. It's cool. I told you I had to go to Gainesville pretty much every weekend back in the day. Yeah, Gainesville's Gainesville's interesting because Gainesville is not Florida. Gainesville is Gainesville. It's a different. It's a different. Florida. It's a little pocket. Yeah, because everybody's like, "Oh, you're from Florida." There's that little meme that's always floating around. Oh, you're from Florida, and it's like the pictures of the beaches and stuff. And it's like, no, I'm from Florida, with it's fucking pine forest and palm meadows. No, no, that's the Florida I'm from. You know, so there's there's different. But yeah, Gainesville, Gainesville is Gainesville. Yep. It's college, town, just kids. Yep. You know. Pretty much. Not my scene. Much. Yeah, not mine either. Even though it was fun when I did go through there a few times, I got to watch a kid get just absolutely smashed by a vehicle on his bike. Listen, when you have a girlfriend and you live an hour away and you spend the whole week without seeing each other, you got to make those sacrifices to go pound that pussy. Yeah, man. What you, <laughs> do what you got to do to clap cheeks. <laughs> Look, everybody's uh, done it. Yeah. So, you know. Anyhow. Do what you do. So Frankie's moving down to Bantam Way. Wow. Finally. You know, he was he was the one fifty five champ, the lightweight champ, and he didn't cut any weight. It's like all those guys were cutting weight and shit, and he did really good for a long time. I mean, now that he's a little bit older and I I don't know if cutting twenty pounds is gonna help him. So he's going to bantamweight? Yeah. 135. So he was at 155. He dropped to 145. So he's still cutting maybe like 10 pounds okay. to make weight. Now he's going to have to drop 20 to make weight. You know? So does he beat Cejudo? <sighs> does he beat Dillashaw? When Dillashaw comes back. If Frankie's still fighting. He said he still wants to fight. He's up in age. He's like, I believe, 38 or 39. Mm. That's rough. I don't know. I, I I just can't pull against them. You know, I can't. I can't. Yeah. I mean, granted, I kind of I knew that Max was going to win that one because you know Max is a different breed. Yeah. And he's at the top of his game right now. But you know, I wouldn't have been mad at all if Frankie beat uh, Max. No. I would have been pretty happy about it. Yeah. You can't really. You, just uh, like I was happy when you know Max won. Yeah, I, uh, those are just a couple of guys that yeah, I they're like. Two good, two good guys. Yeah, you can't, you can't, can't cheer one without cheering the other. So it was kind of hard for me to pick that fight, but I kind of knew that, you know. Yeah, I don't. Max I don't was gonna. So who though? That's gonna be a tough. It's gonna be a tough fight if he gets there. It's like, does the weight cut affect them in any way? You know, does him? You know, like like how he does many other fighters. I guess we'll see. I think it does. I think weight cuts. They do. Anyway, I can't wait to see uh, what happens, but I think he's scheduled to fight at UFC 244 in uh, Madison Square Garden. So we'll see. That'll be in November, and he'll make his 135 debut then. 
Let's see who he's finding. Let's see if it's got it listed yet. It doesn't have anybody listed yet. Oh, let's see. That's Anaheim, Stipe. I believe that's next weekend, isn't it? It is. Uh, there is a fight night this weekend. That's tonight. Uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. UFC Uruguay yeah. with uh, Valentina Chevchenko. And that Liz- starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, everybody, so don't be confused. That's uh, Liz Carmouche and Valentina in the main. But also uh, Mike Perry and Vicente Luque are going to be on the card, which is that should be a pretty decent fight. We got, uh, let's see. Fight night, fight night. 241's Cormier, Cormier Miochik 2. That's when? Uh, 17th, August. Okay, 17th. so next weekend. Next weekend. May have to get that one. I have to see what's on the calendar. I think we'll be here. I don't think we're going anywhere next for the next while. Uh, fight night, then UFC 242's could be, which one did you say he was on? I think 44. 44 Madison Square Garden. Oh, and I believe that they're going to try to make the Colby, Colby Usman for that fight, uh, the main event at that, uh, on that card as well. 44. Oh, yep. shit. That's to nope. be determined, to be determined. November, yeah. Yeah, November 2nd. Let's see if they've got any fights really lined up for it. They probably don't. Uh, looks like it's going to be Corey Anderson, Johnny Walker, Derek Lutus. What? And that's all the that's all they've Co- got listed. Corey Anderson and, and and Johnny Walker. Yeah, that's what they got. Light nice. heavyweight belt. The main event is is not decided, but so far I believe he's going to be Usman and, and Covington. Covington, yeah. yeah. So, but so far it's going to be Anderson, Walker, Derek Lewis, and uh, uh, Jesus, the Black Beast. Yeah, against uh, uh, some Russian. Oh, the 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 bearded guy. Well, the the guy with the five o'clock shadow. I, forgot, I can't pronounce his last name. Yeah, bad boy. Yeah. Ivanov or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Ivanovich. Yeah, that whatever. guy. That guy. The guy that got stabbed and, and survived. Sure. He's Russian. Yeah. Of course he did. I uh, just threw some dirt on it. Exactly. Kept, kept on moving. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I had for today. Did Cowboys you? fighting September oh, 14th. September? Yep. Where? Uh, he's fighting in Vancouver. He is fighting Gagey. Oh. That's a fight night. Woo-hoo. Definitely watching that shit. Yeah, I'm always up for watching Cowboy win. Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Man, getting older. Yeah. Okay. Getting in his prime. <laughs> uh, Told you, man. I'm gonna ride that train until uh, he until he puts some gloves in the ring. Ride it, baby. I'm riding. Hey, when is that Dustin Poirier uh, Khabib? Uh, that one's going to be September 7th, UFC 242 in okay. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. That is going uh, to be a weird one to get because that's got 2 p.m. Well, it's 2 p.m. here. Yeah, 2 p.m. here. So Yeah, but that's because they're like six hours ahead. So six or seven, whatever. Let's see, what kind of, let's see if, this is, if this is even worth thinking about getting other than the main event. I mean, it's Abu Dhabi, so you would think they would really want to put on a show. Yeah. So let's see. So it's Khabib, Poirier, uh, Edson Barboza, Paul Felder, um, Islam Markevich, uh, DV Ramos, Curtis Blades. Davi Ramos. Davi Ramos, Curtis Blades versus a Russian. Uh, looks like another Russian versus Diago Fiera. That's not really a stacked card for that one. Prelims are. Yeah, no, nah, we're going to go ahead and skip up on that one because literally that main event is the ticket for that. That's it. So not worth my $64. $64 makes $64. you holla. $64. Let's see. Whitaker, the next pay-per-view. Who's on Cormier Miochik 2? I think Nate Diaz and... Uh Pettis are on that card, too? Um, yep. So, Pettis Diaz, Yoel, Paulo Costa, uh, don't know, don't know, Derek Bronson. Team Old Body. Yep. Well, that one might be worth I'm, I, I'm, I, I might get that for the Cormier and Diaz fight and the Romero fight. Whatever. Shout out to Gay Jesus. Say no to the Gay Jesus. That's right. Yeah, I might get that. That's three That's three fighters I'm interested in, so that, that might warrant a, a pay-per-view. Well, cool. 
So, but. all right. Did you have anything else to add before no. we uh, get the fuck out of here? No, nah. no, nah. I'm good. I'm good. My balls are so sweaty. Yes, it's hot up here. It's been hot God this week. God damn it. I'm going to have to go home and wash my balls immediately. Immediately. Shit, I might just jump in your toilet and use the water there. Just flush. Just do just dip, do my, swirly. dip my balls in your toilet. Do a swirly. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate your support. And uh, hopefully this week's podcast was a lot more entertaining as far as, uh, you know, having more news and shit than last week's last week we didn't have really anything but anyway again thank you very much for support we appreciate you and we'll catch you next week peace